taking the goods marshal in yard where I work, we shunt the trucks as they come in up to the top of arm. We chalk a number on each truck to show which of the 20 roads is to go into. Then we uncouple it and let it roll down. Thousands of goods wagons a day are sorted like this, to and from all parts of the country, carrying everything from eggs to ammunition. My name's Joe Black. I'm what's called a wagon chaser. That is, I break the trucks on the run so that when they arrive out on the road, they don't smack up too hard behind the others. It's pretty hard work, but it's all right when you get the knack of it, and it keeps you on your toes. The day the incident I'm going to tell you about happened, I threw over the stick to Jimmy Coxon on West Hump at the end of an afternoon shift. I live near the yard, moved out there when I got married so as to be on top of the job. I cycled to and from work, so it wasn't long before I was home and ready to forget about shunting for another 12 hours or so. Well, that's what I thought. After supper, I was smoking a last pipe out in the front. It was a perfect night for an air raid, and an alert had gone early, but the marshalling yard does a 24-hour day job and carried on as usual. Charlie Simmons was taking down wagon numbers on road 15 when the trouble started. acres of marshalling yard and incendiaries and HEs began to fall in so many different parts that every man around was kept busy. To make matters worse, the main supply and the hydrants were hit and in some parts of the yard there was no water pressure. Over on the west side, Charlie and his mate grabbed buckets and stirrup pumps and tackled their fire. They knew they had to do something quickly because it was a fast burning load of wheat. But when they ran up to it, they got the shock of their lives. They didn't leave that wheat truck to fetch help. The flames had to be kept down, away from the next truck. It was those flames I saw from my home. I nipped on my bike and made hell for leather for where the flames were. Meanwhile, Charlie and George were working like mad with the pumps. Hello, Joe. We're trying to keep it away from the ammunition. We must shunt them apart. I'll get an engine. Keep pumping. The loco shed is across the main line. It seemed miles away that night, but I got there and managed to collect an engine and a crew. Give me the main line signal box. Main line signal box speaking. Hello, Harry. Listen, I've got an urgent shunt to make across to number 10. OK, Joe. Take number three across the main down the west siding and back into number ten. And I wish you the best of luck. Right, let's go! If Joe doesn't get here soon, this lot's going sky high. Well, I've made a few footplate rides in my life, but never one that seemed as long as it was that night. We fair burned across those tracks, but all the time I had that other fire in mind and the things dropping around it. Harry up in the box had to stay put. He always has to. And he cleared the roads for a straight run across. Charlie and George were pumping their guts out. They were fighting a losing battle. And the flames and sparks were getting nearer and nearer the ammunition truck. A minute before we arrived, the worst happened. The ammunition truck caught. Back the engine in as gently as we could. We didn't want to disturb anything. Hurry up! And were Charlie and George glad to see us? The ammunition truck's alive! I shinned up to see what I could do. Here, where's your tin hat? Oh, my left and hurry, you must. Take mine, you may need it. Oh, all right. As the truck had only just caught, I thought I might be able to stop it. But directly I got up there, I saw it was hopeless. Fuller under the water spout! Right. If she goes up now, he's a goner. 
I was taking a chance on that water spout being okay. The water columns are fed from a different main to the hydrants, but had that been damaged by bombs too? That's what we didn't know. And that fire was beginning to get a hold. Come on, come on, hurry up! Coming! More this way! Okay. Right! Turn her on! Our luck was in. Blimey, I've never been so glad to see water in all my life. In a few seconds, we doused her down until there wasn't a fizzle left. And a lot of people round about felt more comfortable. When I'd made sure the ammunition trucks was quite safe, I went to see how Charlie and George were getting on. Next day, the marshalling yard was working as usual. We've got to get the trucks through, whatever happens. You may grumble a bit when there's a delay, but don't worry. A little thing like a blitz doesn't hold up a marshalling yard for long. <laughs> 